Let us say amen. amen. Now I tell you, I'm more than happy to be here tonight, and I'm not just saying that to be saying it. I'm thanking God that He spared my life, and I was able to meet with the saints just one more time. Somebody asked me to sing that, and I told them I'm not quite as young as I used to be, and. and Instead of singing two or three songs, when I get up to preach, I better sing where I was the best to try to preach my, <laughs> my sermon. Yes, sir. I want to say hats off to our uh, master of order tonight. Yeah. He, was some, he was somebody. And uh, we're glad for the Judge family and, and Mr. Poole. He's one man that we have to have whether we want him or not. Most times you have you, you don't know nothing about it. <laughs> uh, I'm saved tonight, kept by the mighty power of God, and I love the saints. I visit with you a lot of time during the year, I dream about you, and I was just glad when the time came for me to come to Pentecost. I told the people at the church where I've been pasting for the last 45 and a half years that uh, we're going to Pentecost and I said, I'm hoping to be stronger when I get back. All right. I watched Bishop Rice, I need to go through Montgomery en route to Mobile. And a lot of time I'd call Bishop Rice and tell him I was going to pick him up. And I'd go by there and Bishop Rice just could put his, get himself in the car. Wasn't able to carry no suitcase or nothing, but he'd go to Pentecost State 10 days and he'd grab two great big suitcases. <laughs> like a boy. God will give him strength. And I tell you, strength here among the saints. That's no joke. And the Bible says the, the prayers of the righteous are fail as much. And if you can believe that, there's something to rely on. I have a very familiar passage of scripture when it comes down to, to the scripture because I'm quite sure that this passage of scripture has been read as, as, as often as any other passage of scripture in the Bible, and that's from the third chapter of Genesis, talking about the fall of Adam. I want someone to get me Genesis 3 and uh, Genesis 3, uh, 6 through 9 and Genesis 3, 18 through 21. Would like to talk, take a text from those uh, verses and I need your prayer. You know, when I first left Hainwood down in Lowndes County, I don't know where everybody know where that's at, but I thought I saw Fred Grant back there, and he did tell you where it is. And I went another little small town, you know, and I went uptown, and I stepped on the scales, and a little sign came up, and said, where will I go from here? <laughs> I thought it was a give me an answer that I was going to wind up in some other big city. I dropped a pen in there. The sign came up and go home and got the pen. <laughs> so that's what I'm about to say now. We'd go home if we got the pen. <laughs> from the book of Genesis. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasing to the eye. That's just a question to read it back. Come on. And a cheek to keep it Uh-huh. All right. She took of the fruit thereof. 
she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband with her, uh, with her. And, he did eat. and he did eat and the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. All right, now let's stick a pin in that. They sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. All right, read the next from the 19th verse through the 21st. In the square of our face. All right.
get a lot of little people skin yes, and sir. Throw it together. And that would make those things so expensive. Yes, sir. So we, we are dealing with showing you how God, regardless to whatever you get in, if you go to God, He'll help you out of it. God is not like us. We can, we can get into it with one another and, and, and the Lord has to move one of us, you know, for us to forgive one another. But God is standing merciful. He is standing ready at all times. Here we have in our message for tonight, we think of the miraculous and almost for dumb upgrade in the life of some men has been the inspiration which uh, helped and probably saved others when we stop short of doing something because we feel that we are not able. Right. We have but to remember what others have accomplished. Think about what others have accomplished. And then try again and again. And when inspired by the attainment of other men, new strength come, which enabled us to explain, expand the boundary line of uh, imaginable limitations. We think about uh, Abraham Lincoln. Abraham went from a real splitter to the President of the United States. All right. All right. It ain't what you are now. Jesus said one, one day, say, behold, now are we the sons of God. But it does not yet appear what we shall be. Henry Ford, the first, went from a blacksmith's couple to the world's most richest, one of the world's most richest men. They said Booker T. Washington went from a slave to the Hall of Fame. Uh, George Washington Carver went from a sickly baby to become the world's greatest scientist. And uh, Mary McLeod Bethune went from a fly hand to a most prominent woman of her day. Now when we think of the text, the text come to us tonight from the disobedience of Adam and Eve. And it relates them naked. The act of sin immediately followed by the scene of guilt and shame. Will they remain soon after he, pray the Lord, uh, become disobedient the bond of union with God is broken. And the sense of nature of man is released itself from uh, the union of the spirit which rested in God. It stands there naked and bare, calling uh, for its feeble weight a weakness uh, in an uncurity. Disobedience uh, is the wickedness of the conscience. When a person really has disobeyed God, their conscience wakes up. Nobody had to tell Adam he had sinned. The minute he sinned and disobeyed God, his eyes came open. He knew he was naked. God didn't go down early in the morning. 
God waited until the cool of the day. It looked like I could see him going down in the garden. And Adam was so used to God coming until he knew God walked. And when God asked Adam, where are thou? Adam said, I heard your voice walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And I knew it was the Lord. And I hid myself among the trees of the garden. Let the church say amen. I'm glad today, praise the Lord, that man stand naked before God, feeling uh, in hope uh, and in desperation for the presence of God. Adam and Eve, praise the Lord, lost, praise the Lord, they're standing with God, but they gained a conscience. Their conscience told them that I've done wrong. I've done wrong. Uh, something has happened here. So they, they, they went to the far corner of the God. They went in the, in the midst of the, the, the fig tree. They made them some apron. They got their apron on and when they got their apron on and no doubt Adam got his apron on and asked Sister Eve how I look. She said, you look all right if you just don't turn around. Because that's all you got on is the apron. And do you know an apron is nothing but a front? And do you know a lot of people in that salvation is nothing but a front? Now you turn around. Got nothing but a front. Get up and go and check with a long testimony. Nothing but a front. All right. Let the church say amen. So, but God does not cease to care for me. Although he has rebelled against God. They had so fig leaves together. Looked like I could see them yet down there under the tree with their fig leaves on them. God knew where they were. God didn't have to ask them where they were, but God wanted their statement. God wanted them to admit where they were. He wanted them to say within themselves where they were. So they said, we are here in the God. Uh, finally, praise the Lord, they began to think about the uh, frenzy of the material. The material of the apron was very frail. It was uh, not sufficient. The apron uh, just cannot feel uh, the place of a coat. It too failed to feel the place of a coat. You can never feel happy in an apron uh, uh, compared to a coat. You get a fur coat on, you can go down to the bride. You better not get one of them long ones on. You won't get no bride on your leg. That fur coat will, take, will protect your leg. Won't the bride, won't scratch your leg. In God order, let the church say, yeah, the apron uh, just cannot feel the pain uh, of a cold. Uh, Adam refused uh, to be inspected by God. Uh, Adam and his wife, uh, they were here, uh, and they wouldn't tell God uh, exactly where they were. Uh, say, we are hiding uh, but among the trees of the God. Uh, Ain't God all right? Uh, ain't you glad about it? Uh, God is so wonderful. Uh, but look at here. Uh, instead of God uh, uh, con 
from Egypt to flow coat. We're going to from Egypt to flow coat. And just as plain as anything. And God made the flow coat. If you just read it again in that 21st verse, will you read it and see it for yourself? And God made them. Somebody read it for me. All right. Also, and his wife. Uh huh. And the Lord God. The Lord God. Made coats of skins. Made coats of skins. To clothe them. Amen. 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 Made coats of skin. He put some put some skins together. Amen. To clothe them. In other words, they could walk down the street with pride. Everybody looks at any lady. I tell you, she ain't got to be much of a lady. If she throw her some, some skins on, go walking down the street, you got to look around and see who that under. 